Hi, this is Jerry Mischewski with Balance Community. Uh, today we're going to be looking at our BC Primitive Slackline Kit, which is our most popular primitive kit. And we've done some great updates to it. Now it includes tree protectors, adjustable anchor slings, and a sewn loop on your webbing. So let's take a look at how to set it up. Our BC Primitive Slackline Kit comes with the following equipment. You get two tree light tree protectors, 80 feet of our one inch slack spec tubular with a sewn loop on one end, uh, four Omega Pacific carabiners, one BC shackle, a small steel ring, a medium steel ring, and two eight foot adjustable anchor slings. With this kit, we could set up lines up to about 65 feet on our own, and this line will offer the best dynamics out of all of our primitive slack line kits due to the high stretch of our one inch slack spec tubular. Uh, let's get started at rigging. For the first step on our rigging mission, we're gonna need our first tree light tree protector, one of our adjustable anchor slings, the sewn loop end of our one inch slack spec tubular, and the BC shackle. Let's get going. All right, so once you've found an adequately sized tree that has about 12 inch diameter at the height you want to use it, we're going to wrap our tree pro around this tree, uh, ensuring there's no twist in the tree pro and connect the buckle uh, ends together and cinch it down. Uh, and you want to set the line at about between waist and chest height, depending on the length of the line. Here we have about a 30 footer and I'm going to rig it kind of loose today. And so I put it up at about chest height. And then what you're going to want to do is take your adjustable anchor sling, pass it through all the sling loops in the tree pro all the way around the tree, ensuring there's no twists in the sling as well. And then you're going to take your BC shackle and pass it through two of the anchor loops in your sling, ensuring the angle at the shackle is roughly 90 degrees. As you can see, it is here. Anything less than 90 is fine, but you do not want to exceed 90 degrees and then finally you're going to attach the sewn loop to the pin of that shackle and ensuring that the shackle is not sitting incorrectly you don't want it sitting like this you want the sewn loop of your webbing to be on the pin side of this shackle so now we're going to walk towards the tensioning end ensuring that the line stays flat along the way for the next step in our rigging process, we're going to rig the tensioning anchor. And so for that, we're going to need our other tree light protector, our other sling, three carabiners, and a small steel ring. All right, here we are at the tensioning side of the line. Uh, we found another adequately sized tree with at least 12 inches diameter at the height we want to rig it, which is about the same as the other side. Um, so we're going to do the same thing we did last time on the static end. Now wrap our tree pro around, connect the buckle ends together, pass our adjustable sling through the sling loops. But now we're going to do a, something a little different than the other side. So what we're going to do is to take one end of the sling and pass it through one of the anchor loops on the other end of the sling, not the last one, so if you can avoid it. Um, and then cinch it down as much as you can. And then what you're gonna do is find a hole on one side and align it with the other and clip two carabiners there. There's one. And you want them both facing the exact same direction. And so the reason we're doing that is to prevent tri-loading on these carabiners. Tri-loading is when there's three directions of force on a carabiner. And so uh, carabiners are not designed to do that. So if we had it the way we have the other anchor, like this, not pass through. Instead, we just chose two loops and clipped them straight away like that you can see that there's three directions of force on that carabiner, and that is not good. We've seen premature failures in carabiners from that 
uh, load configuration, and so you should avoid it at all costs. So to prevent that from happening, we simply pass one end of the sling through the other. That way the three directions of force are being applied to the sling rather than the carabiner. Align two loops together and clip your carabiners there instead. Both carabiners. So now you can see there's only two directions of force on those carabiners. All right, so the next step is we're gonna build a line locker and then build our tensioning system. All right, so we're about 90% um, of the way from the static anchor to the tensioning anchor. We have about 10% of the length left. So this is a 30 foot line. We have about three feet left to the tensioning anchor. And that's how much room you wanna leave. And so we're gonna build a line locker here. And to do that, simply take your line and form a bite with the walking line on top, tail on the bottom. Pass that bite through your small steel ring, like so. Come around and go up through the same direction. Like so. Take your carabiner and clip it to that bite. Voila. And you want to turn the carabiner around so that it opens on the tensioning anchor side. So now we're going to use this tail to build a tensioning system. All right, so we got our line locker here and the tail coming out from the bottom. We're going to run that tail to our bottom carabiner here and pass it up through that carabiner, just like so. And now we're going to come back to this side and run it up through this carabiner, like so. Come back, run it down through the top carabiner, like so. And finally, up through this side, passing it underneath the previous pass. And that's a critical step there because that's what's gonna be holding the tension as we pull. As you can see, I pull tension here and it captures it by squeezing the previous strand. And so now we can just simply pull here, tension the line. Get as much as you can. And since this webbing stretches quite a bit, at the, uh, towards the end of the length maximum, around 65 feet, um, you're going to need more tension than you can get by simply pulling here. And so that next step requires installing a multiplier. Let's look at how to do that. All right, so you've done all the tension you can with just a simple primitive system here, and you're finding that the line is still hitting the ground in the middle. So what you're going to do is you're going to build a multiplier using a medium steel ring and the fourth carabiner. You're gonna take that fourth carabiner and clip it to one of the tails of your adjustable anchor sling. Just one of the loops right underneath there. Then you're gonna take the tail of your tensioning system, pass it, pass a bite up through the ring, and do what's called a uh, girth hitch. Just simply pass that loop around the ring. Voila. I'll include a link at how to do that uh, in the description of the video. So get that as close to this front carabiner as possible. And then take the tail coming from that and go down this carabiner just like so. And then what we're going to do is pass a bite through the ring like so. And so now we can pull here, and it's way easier to add more tension. Pull on this side, take this, pull it until it reaches that back carabiner. And then we'll reset by simply pulling that bite through there, following this strand into the girth hitch. Here, this is that strand, pull that cinch it up to the front, and 
and then you want to work that slack around the knot, pulling it here. And then simply do that again, pass the bite through here, a little more tension, and continue resetting, pulling until your desired tension has been reached. And then finally, we can tie a back up. So undo your multiplier by undoing that girth hitch around the ring, put that in your pocket, and do what's called a munter hitch on this carabiner. So a munter hitch is simply like that, and then down and over like that. I'll include a link on how to do that as well. Simply clip that to this carabiner. Voila. Cinch it up by following the strand entering and working the slack through. And then now we're going to do what's called a mule. So make a little loop like that with the tail on the bottom. Then go up and over. Simply like that. Cinch it down. And then we can just do a hitch around everything. And what that does is if this tensioning system ever slips, it'll load this tail on this munter hitch right there. And this is a releasable knot. And so if this ever sees tension, you can simply undo everything here and let tension out very slowly. So that'll prevent you from ever uh, needing to rescue your slack line if something goes wrong, which is very unlikely, but just in case. So now, all right, so we've done all the slack lining we want to on the line today. And now we're ready to take the line down. So how do we do it? Uh, well, first we want to undo our backup knot. So simply undo that, pull your mule out, undo the munter hitch, Take this beaner out and put it in your pocket. Make sure to not lose it. And now, if you remember this, this spot right here, this strand is tucked underneath the previous strand, and that's what's holding the tension. So what we're gonna wanna do is come from this side, position yourself several feet back. I suggest at least four feet. Pull until it comes untucked there and simply let the pinch down. Very chill, super easy. And once the tension is fully let out like it is now, we can simply deconstruct everything, pack it up, and go home. That pretty much covers it for the setup and takedown process for the BC Primitive Slackline Kit. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below or check out our website balancecommunity.com where you can see a bunch of pictures and see our written manual for how to set this up as well. Uh, again, thanks for watching. My name is Jerry Mischeski from Balance Community.